All right, hey, what's up everybody? This is a Cycling Panda once again, and I just wanted to make a quick video showing you guys how to feed your bottom feeders, um, like quarry cats and uh, bottom dwelling um, chicklids, as well as just, you know, just a quick little tutorial on how to just feed a community tank in general. Now, believe it or not, bottom feeder fish like quarry cats and, uh, and, and those chicklets that I was talking to, and some, not all, um, and, and other bottom dwelling fish, they do need to be fed a little bit differently than your, your mid and uh, top dwelling uh, aquarium fish. So, what do you need to feed them and how? Well, first of all, you need the food. And they do need some special foods. Um, there are a bunch available on the market, uh, but what you're looking for are think are foods that sink. And so, I'm currently using these uh, Hikari sinking wafers for bottom feeders. Um, I'm not really comfortable giving them an endorsement or really a review either way. Um, I, I like the size of these things so far. They're pretty good. Uh, size for for my fish to be feast to to eat because um, I noticed that some are actually a little bit too big like uh, these for example the algae the algae uh, wafers which I they're, they're sinking and I also feed these to my fish and I'll show you how later but these are just a little bit bigger uh, than than the sinking wafers and. I find that when they're too big, it's hard to control the portions, you know? Sometimes one fish hogs the whole thing and uh, none of the other fish get a bite and, you know, to try to compensate for that, you add too many and it ends up just kind of rotting in your tank and going going bad and just fouling up the water, just no good. Um, so, this, so this is how I've managed to kind of get around that. So first, I'm going to show you guys. Um, Hopefully you guys can see this. There you go. Okay. So the here, let me show you the angle. So the food comes in two different sizes as you can see. The one on the left is one of the algae wafers, and the two on the right are the uh, just regular sinking wafers. You know, I feel like the smaller foods on the right are a much better size for uh, quarry cats, for example, to eat uh, as individual servings. So what I'm going to do is I'm actually going to just break the algae wafer on the left into smaller pieces. And let's see if I can get this with the camera. Yeah, so I mean, it's not rocket science. You just kind of poke it down like that, you know, like that, like that. You know, that, that's perfectly fine. It does not have to be perfect at all. It just, you know, you just want somewhat even um, sizes. I, I find that four pieces is generally good for me. And then you got your food ready to go. So how do you actually feed the fish? Well, since these are sinking uh, foods, there's a couple things you gotta watch out for. Uh, one is that uh, they might get caught on something on the way down, like plants or driftwood. You know, I got a lot of stuff in there and sometimes they do get caught. So you'll want something to poke, something long uh, that you can kind of poke things with. For example, I use aquascaping tongs, which I would highly recommend that all of you aspiring aquascapers get. It's so useful. Um, even if you don't have plants in the aquarium, I recommend that you get some. Uh, but the other thing that you need to do, worry about is that the other fish that kind of hang out near the surface, if they haven't been distracted or fed already, a lot of the time they'll get to the sinking wafers before your bottom feeders do. So this is what I like to do to kind of distract them. So I take just some uh, regular flake food, you know, just a pinch. I find that a lot of uh, newbies are really worried about underfeeding their fish and it really should be overfeeding that they're worried about. I mean, fish really don't need as much food as you may think. Like, uh, in the wild, they don't get fed that much. You know, they can actually hunt for their food. The ones that we have at, uh, that we keep at home are definitely spoiled. So, I just grab a small little pinch, you know, 
you can see the fish are uh, they're ready and so I try to uh, spread the flakes on one general area in the tank and that kind of draws yeah I see because you got the angelfish and the rummy nose going crazy up there and then I take the prepared foods for the bottom feeders and then I just kind of mix them together and uh, I saw this on some forum somewhere uh, they called it the shotgun technique and you try to find a generally kind of open area without too many plants and you just you just drop them all in and as you can see they're, they're floating down slowly some of them may get caught um, and there's one still floating up there and here's where the pliers come in or the tongs So, let's see here, yeah that one's still floating so this is where you just poke it a little bit and it'll start sinking or if in this case you get caught on one of the java friends right there, just give it a little tap and down it goes. Alright, and so since you've put down multiple pieces of sinking food, you ensure that all the little guys down there have a chance to get a piece but since you broke up a bigger uh, the, the algae wafer you make sure that you're not putting too much in there overall and so you know every day uh, each, for each one of these guys have a chance to to get either a little bit of sinking wafer or a little bit of algae wafer and I, I do mix it up a little bit with some blood worms you know so they do get a good variety of foods um, so Oh, I forgot about uh, portion sizes. Um, typically, if it, if your uh, if your sinking food is the size of uh, the sinking wafers that I'm using, uh, maybe put in. I would say you take the total number of uh, of uh, bottom feeder fish that you have and subtract one, and that's the number that you put in. So, for example, um, I have uh, I have six bottom feeders in there right now. I have five quarries in the one blue bean ram. And so I would recommend putting in five of the smaller sized sinking wafers in there. But since I also supplement it with the algae wafers, I pick them up into smaller pieces. So I think I end up putting, ooh, let me see, four, plus two. I end up putting six pieces in there. And you know, I mean, that's one more than I recommend, but um, I, I've noticed that my rummy nose tetras and my angelfish also really like uh, going after the sinking wafers as well. So you know, w one extra sliver of uh, wafer is gonna hurt. You know, uh, if you added one whole um, extra algae wafer, for example, and you do that consistently day in and day out, then you might have some problems, uh, s uh, especially you know the typical problems that you see when you start overfeeding your fish. Uh, talking algae, you know, like deteriorating water quality, that kind of thing, you know, it's just all bad. So, um, just a quick recap, uh, make sure to portion your, uh, the, your food for your bottom feeders correctly, make sure to get a special food that is designed to sink for bottom feeders, uh, use the shotgun technique, uh, have something handy that you can use to tap the, the food in case it gets caught in something, and uh, distract the fish th that swim on the surface in the mid-level of the tank first by feeding them some flight food um, on a different side of the tank. All right, that's it for now. Thanks for watching, and as always, if you have any questions or comments, uh, leave a response at the bottom of the video, and if you like the video and want to see more, please subscribe. Thanks, bye.